Item Number SCP-792 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-792 is surrounded by an electric fence topped with razor wire, measuring 4 meters high. The only entrance to SCP-792 is a gate on the south side, which is to be guarded by three armed security personnel at all times. Additional security personnel are posted every 1.5 km around the perimeter. SCP-792 must be inspected weekly for new instances of SCP-792-1, except between September 2nd and October 31st. No other personnel are to be admitted to the area. SCP-792 is a wooded area, measuring 4 square kilometers near the town of SCP-792 contains, at any given time, between 37 and 4,500 human corpses, hereby designated SCP-792-1. Instances of SCP-792-1 vary greatly in race, age, etc., with slight trends existing towards Caucasian and Hispanic descent and heightened age. All specimens are nude. Instances emerge from the ground at apparently random intervals, at a rate of roughly 10 per day, in a process that takes between 9 and 14 days. SCP-792-1 specimens will emerge headfirst in a prone position. After emergence, decomposition will proceed as expected in SCP-792's environment. Fully emerged instances of SCP-792-1 show no unusual properties. If removed from the ground prior to complete formation, the portions of SCP-792-1 that were underground will be composed of a large mass of root-like structures. Analysis of these structures have shown them to be identical in composition to human muscle tissue. Once a year, between the dates of September 2nd and October 31st, 90 to 130 humanoid figures, hereby referred to as SCP-792-2, will appear in and climb out of a pond in the center of the area. Instances of SCP-792-2 are clothed in white Level A hazmat suits, with tinted visors which prevent the face from being visible. Instances are sapient, and capable of communication in English. After exiting the pond, SCP-792-2 will retrieve fully formed instances of SCP-792-1 and place them in the pond, where they will disappear. This process takes two days to complete. An average of 13% of fully grown instances of SCP-792-1 are not taken through the pond. Instead, instances of SCP-792-2 will construct a large bonfire in the center of SCP-792 and burn them. The purpose of this is currently unknown. If questioned, instances of SCP-792-2 are generally cooperative, but will refuse to leave the area and show anxiety to begin working again. Addendum 9A Interview 792-4 Interviewed SCP-792-2 Interviewer Senior Researcher Forward On the 12th of 1997, a single instance of SCP-792-2 emerged from SCP-792 and requested to speak with the person in charge of the containment of SCP-792. After some deliberation, Senior Researcher chose to conduct an interview. Began Log Why did you want to talk to me? Your research is… disrupting our work. And your work is? Farming. Yes, we understand that already. But what's the point? Why do you do it? It is our duty. Can you elaborate? Those headed for Assad require guides. We judge who is worthy and who is not. The worthy are taken to Assad. Those who aren't we destroy. And by conducting our research, we're preventing you from doing this? Yes. The crop cannot be disturbed. What will happen if we continue our research? Death is not a right. It is a… gift that we could deny. Are you threatening us? No. You are threatening those who would otherwise be welcomed into Isad. Your research is preventing them from resting. Could you not just take them regardless? I would like to leave now. At this point, SCP-792-2 attempted to get up and leave the interviewing area, but was restrained by guards and put in a holding cell. 
Three hours later it disappeared from the cell. Current whereabouts are unknown. End log. Closing Statement Senior Researcher has requested the suspension of all testing involving SCP-792. Request denied by Site Director